What's up, everybody? We all know that putting your sub into mono is an essential step in your production, but there's never been a super straightforward way of doing this in Ableton Live until now in version 10. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you guys the absolute easiest, the fastest, and the most straightforward way to mono your sub. So let's go hit the studio and do this. Oh, sorry guys, intro. Just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting subscribe and activating notifications. That way, you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as I post them. If you're on the mobile app, you just click right here to subscribe, then here to get notifications, and follow the enable prompts to activate them in your settings. <laughs> To demo this technique, we first need a sound with a lot of stereo information in it. So I've got a MIDI clip ready to fire off here, and on the MIDI track is the new Wavetable synth from Live 10. It's playing a preset that I just grabbed called Abdominal Bass. Let's listen to what it sounds like. Okay, so if we go down to the synth, I'm going to actually add in a bit more stereo information using the Unison engine down here. Then I'm going to enhance the stereo information further by using Live's reverb device. In this reverb, I have the stereo parameter pushed up to 120, which means it's going to be adding in a lot of stereo information on the sides. You'll notice I don't have the low cut turned on on the reverb, which means the reverb is also going to be applied down in the bottom in the subs. And that's going to accentuate the problem that we commonly run into and the solution. Before we move on though, this track is just craving for some drums. So I'm going to grab something from my sample library. We have the Darkside Funk sample pack that we made at Warp Academy, and it's got some killer drum loops in it. If we go into drums and we go into drum loops, we have a drum and bass section down here. So let's fire off some of these guys and just choose an appropriate loop. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. So in Live 9, here's how we used to put the bottom end in mono. I built a custom rack because it was fairly time consuming to do this. So I've got my library. And if we go to my presets and we can just search in here, we'll search for multiband. And we can see I've got a rack right here that's been built and it's got a multiband splitter on it. And what that does is it's using the multiband dynamics because it has a built-in crossover. I'm not using anything else in this device. I'm literally just using this to create the split. So I'm soloing the top band for the highs, the mid band for the mids, the bottom band for the subs. And you can see that I have a utility on there and that the mid side balance is turned down so it's in mono. So that's how we used to do it. If you guys want to grab this rack and you're running Live 9, I've made a link for you guys and you can grab that for free. Now let's check out the new way, the improved streamlined way. In Live 10, I haven't seen anybody really cover this yet. I think it's maybe something that kind of slipped under the radar with all the uh, pomp and circumstance with everything else. But if you grab the everyday regular old utility device, you can see now that there is a feature called Bass Mono. So the utility device has gotten a little tweak. And what it does is it gives you a parameter you can flip on, and it gives you a crossover, and it gives you a preview button. And what this does is it takes everything underneath the crossover frequency that you set, and it puts it into mono right from the utility. One simple device 
one simple parameter, one click of a button, and now the bottom end of your element in your song or the entire song, if you put this on your master, is now in mono. So let's preview what this actually sounds like. I'm going to solo our bass track, and we're going to listen, and we're going to activate and deactivate the bass mono. So I would recommend listening to this in headphones, and I'm not talking about earbuds here. I'm talking about headphones that are reference quality and have drivers that are beefy enough to produce low frequencies because we're going to be listening to the subs here. Okay. Now, if you didn't notice the difference with that, here is a handy feature. If you turn on the preview button, then this is going to audition the bottom end and only give you the subs. So if you're listening in headphones, like I just recommended, you're going to hear a substantial, a gargantuan difference in the bottom end. To accentuate that even further, we can turn the crossover frequency up. So we can go all the way from 50 hertz all the way up to 500 hertz. Now let's listen to really capturing the low mids as well as the subs. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to point this one out because I think that it's important not to overlook this. It's actually a really substantial time-saving workflow upgrade in Live 10, and I'm super, super stoked to see this feature. And it's going to save you guys a ton of time. I hope you really, really dig it, use it, and enjoy. If you liked what we covered today, it'd be super sweet if you dropped a thumbs up on this video. Extra points if you share it around. The more people that see my videos, the easier it is for me to keep making more of them for you. Your support is massively appreciated. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I hope you got a lot out of that little tidbit. It's super simple, but hey, when you do something right, it doesn't need to be complicated. And that's what I love about Ableton Live. It just gets out of your way, allows you to stay in the creative flow and empowers you to make music. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the video underneath in the comments, as well as any questions at all that you have about Ableton Live 10. I'll be including those in upcoming videos. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you soon. Peace.